Hello and welcome to the Oasis Global Gathering. Wherever you are and whoever you are, you are most welcome. We're really pleased that you've chosen to join us in this, in this virtual space. For those of you who I have not met, my name is Dan. I am part of the Oasis Church here in Waterloo. This week we're going to be continuing our series exploring the nine habits. What does it mean to live full Christ-centered lives? And what are the character traits or the habits that will enable us to do that. Later, Rebecca will be sharing her thoughts on compassion. But before we do that, before we hear from Rebecca, watch this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To all our volunteers, your commitment, your passion uh, and your determination over this last year has made a massive difference to the lives of our families and our young people. But it's kept us going as well, kept us working together, kept us laughing together, and kept us aiming to see that difference and reaching that potential that we know is invaluable for our communities. I'd like to say a massive thank you to all our volunteers, our Hub Council volunteers, our student volunteers, our partner organisations. They've all been absolutely incredible. So I just want to say a massive thank you. You make all the difference to Lister Park and it's a joy to be the community hub leader here. Hi, I'm Nathan, the hub leader at Oasis Waterloo. And like everyone else, I wanted to say a massive thank you to all our volunteers for everything you've done over this last year. When we first went into lockdown, I think we all had a decision to make. Would we retreat into our houses, stay on our own and wait for all this to go away? Or would we keep trying to push forward keep trying to help those who are struggling and vulnerable. I'm really proud that we did step forward, that we did keep going, and that so many volunteers in our community played a massive part in that. So thank you. It's been a real privilege to work alongside you. Hi, I'm Ashley Bennett, the hub leader here in Oasis North Bristol. I just wanted to say a huge, huge thank you to all of our amazing volunteers and staff. It's been absolutely outstanding what you've been able to achieve over the last 13 months in the middle of a pandemic. And yeah, I am completely in awe that not only have we managed to start new projects, but we've supported people in ways that we've never ever done before. And that is just completely outstanding. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm just absolutely privileged to be able to see and work alongside you. The team here at Oasis Hub Media City UK would like to thank all our volunteers who've supported us this last year. From the teachers who volunteered their time to support our summer sessions, to our fantastic team of volunteer drivers who've helped us to deliver hundreds of freshly cooked meals and free school meal food parcels. Thank you to each of you. I am so grateful to have this opportunity to celebrate you as our volunteers here at Oasis Warnden at this event today and also just to be part of the phenomenal team of volunteers right across Oasis. I just cannot believe how you have all put yourselves out time and time again to make sure that most importantly people living in our community had food and all of the necessities that they needed to make this last 12 months that little bit more bearable by collecting food late at night from supermarkets and distributing it to families making ready meals and filling our freezers at the hub so that we had food in times of crisis to support people, helping us to fundraise, um, providing clothing, um, you know, all of the stuff that kind of goes on behind the scenes that people don't often see. And our phenomenal um, Christmas hamper appeal, where we were able to collectively pull together and produce some absolutely beautiful Christmas hampers to just help people smile that little bit more at Christmas just gone. Today is our chance to a real heartfelt thank you because we couldn't have done it without you. Thank you. Thank you to all our staff and volunteers for the work that they've done during um, the last year. It's been one of the hardest years I think any of us have undertaken, but we really appreciate your ongoing support and commitment to the hub and obviously our local community. It's been a time where we've really been able to engage with our local community and build community and hopefully as we come out of lockdown we'll be able to um, see the benefits of that as we um, are able to join back together. 
I just wanted to say uh, an absolutely massive thank you to all of you who have given so much of your time, your energy, your effort, your creativity, your talents. And because of that, Oasis is just such a rich organisation. I've been so aware, I think this year more than ever, of how we just could not do any of the things that we do as Oasis without people like you. And I think this year particularly it would have been understandable if volunteers perhaps would have stepped back a little bit and retreated and needed to kind of look after themselves. But actually all I've seen is the opposite of that, people that are um, willing to kind of step up even more to help in whatever way they can. Um, and locally in Bath we've seen that through people delivering food parcels, through popping in on people that are isolated or lonely. Um, we've opened a food pantry as well and uh, been able to help people in lots of different ways. But what's underneath all of that is volunteers. Um, we couldn't do it without you. So thank you so much. And please know that you are really deeply valued and appreciated. That's great. This week was the annual Oasis Community Partnerships Conference, or OCPCA, as I like to refer to it as. Oasis Community Partnerships is the arm of Oasis that delivers community work. It sits alongside Oasis Community Health and Oasis Community Learning and Oasis Community Housing, all of the great services that Oasis is pouring into communities across the country. And in the last year, even as uh, we were dealing with the pandemic, Oasis continued to support families across our country. In the last year alone, 43,000 people accessed um, services from Oasis hubs. That included 7,500 young people who were supported and the delivery of 34,000 meals. The video that we just watched was one way to say a massive thank you to the 700 plus volunteers who made all of that possible. So if you're watching this and you have given some of your time freely, a massive thank you again. We're about to hear from Rebecca as we explore, we continue to explore the nine habits and this week, as I said, we're, we're diving into compassion. But before we do that, before we hear from Rebecca, we're going to hear from Jess as she reads a little bit from Genesis chapter four. Adam made love to his wife Eve and she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. And later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favour on Abel and his offering, but Cain and his offering did not, he did not look with favour. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, let's go out into the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? The Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are under a curse and driven from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you work the ground, it will no longer yield its crops for you. You will be a restless wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is more than I can bear. Today, you are driving me from the land and I will be hidden from your presence I will be a restless wanderer on this earth, but whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. 
Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. This morning, I've been tasked with talking about our habit of being compassionate. I want to start by saying that within Oasis, when we talk about this habit, this is how we've defined it. We desire to be compassionate and kind while acting justly. Compassion is the ability and willingness to place ourselves in the position of another and as a result, be able to show kindness to them without ignoring or dismissing the truth about their situation. My alternative idea for this morning's sermon title was how to shake off the superhero complex. Because I think we often can have a misplaced understanding of what justice and compassion should look like. However well-meaning, I think it can turn into a moral superiority contest or a way to assuage our guilt about an injustice we see and don't quite know how to respond to. Who can swoop in, be the rescuer, throw some cash at the situation and then not have to think about it again. I can definitely be guilty of this. Some of you know I run our advice centre and food bank in our hub in Waterloo. The perfect job really to build a strong saviour complex. I've been guilty of seeing someone I'm supporting just for their lack, their need, rushing in to provide practical support, then feeling like the hero of the story, patting myself on the back because I have single-handedly fixed someone's problems. But actually I haven't done that. And I think when we make it about ourselves, we can miss the systemic injustice that's at hand, but we also miss the opportunity to demonstrate genuine compassion in our rush to play the hero. I'm going to talk a bit about where I think this comes from, but to start us off with that, let's look at the story from the Bible that Jess read to us. We're in the story of Genesis. Adam and Eve have had to leave the Garden of Eden, and so their children, Cain and Abel, are born outside of their true home, their true place of belonging. And the stories throughout this bit of Genesis show us what it looks like when we turn away from living the way of God's goodness. So Cain and Abel are bringing their offerings to God, and for some reason God looks more favourably on Abel's. Cain sees red. His resentment, envy, rage and a sense of self-entitlement build. This division reaches the point where Cain attacks and kills Abel. Cain's arrogant response when God asks where Abel has gone sounds almost like a cruel joke. Am I my brother's keeper? He says. God sees right through this and says even the blood of Abel cries out from the ground. The injustice of the situation is so apparent. God sees what's really going on here. And we see again in this story, as we do in the one that comes before it, where Adam and Eve eat the fruit in the Garden of Eden, what happens when we allow our own feelings of jealousy and resentment and fear to thrive? And God doesn't have to answer Cain's question. Because yes, of course, Cain was supposed to be his brother's keeper. He should have been walking alongside his brother. We see right from the beginning, right from the origin stories of our faith, we are all connected. We're all designed to need one another. We belong to each other. Compassion, I think, should always come from this root of belonging. And I think sometimes we struggle to know belonging securely in ourselves. So our own lack of feeling we belong seeps into how we live and act and gets in the way of the habit of compassion. Just a bit earlier in Genesis from the story of Cain and Abel, we find ourselves in the midst of the poem of creation where God creates humanity and it is in her own image. God creates humankind and calls it very good. But I think for many of us, the dominant message we have heard about God's love for us, God's compassion for us, is from a place of our sin, our wrongdoing. And I think we get it into our heads that God begrudgingly loves us, out of some sense of duty, but that we're still really defined by our wrongs. But what we clearly see in this story is that we are made originally good, in the very image of God. That goodness is at work in every one of us. 
Each of us are loved. Each of us are enough. Of course we mess up along the road. None of us are perfect, but I think our goodness defines us far more than our wrongs. So to go back to what I said at the beginning, I think the saviour complex I mentioned also stems from this lack of a sense of belonging and of connectedness. Because when we don't feel secure in our connection to others and in who we are, it causes fear and shame and division to grow and we can become motivated by guilt and obligation. We need to feel we have the answers or the power because we lack security within ourselves. And I don't think living with a view of compassion rooted in belonging removes the need for practical action, for getting involved, for addressing injustice. But for me, I need to reframe the why of my action, to be rooted in belonging and community, not in guilt and shame. Within Oasis, we're talking a lot at the moment about the idea of community movement, to try and shift from a sense of doing things to or for communities, and instead to provide spaces where every person in the community can contribute, to use their skills and resources to create community where everyone can thrive. And hopefully communities that are then defined by compassion and justice. So I wonder what this means for us, for you, wherever you're watching. When we know that each of us are made in the image of God, I think we're able to see everyone we encounter in a slightly different way, in a compassionate way. But people are still difficult, people will still be annoying or hard to understand. So it's not as simple as just reorientating our thinking and hoping for the best. We have to practice compassion. That's why we call it a habit. We need to live it out in the big and the small stuff. I wonder if we could look for opportunity this week to see the best instead of defaulting to assuming the worst in someone we encounter this week, even if that's difficult. I wonder if we could take the time to really be alongside someone this week, to take the time for a coffee, a walk, a phone call. I wonder how we could get involved with our local communities. What things are happening that we can get stuck in with? Where does the ground cry out from situations of injustice that need to be seen, to be heard, to be noticed, to be called out? And how can you join in to respond to injustice with compassion? Each one of us is loved, made in the image of God, bound together as community and called to compassion and to justice. How are we going to live like it? There's a lot to think about. For me, compassion begins with recognising in the other what I am quick to claim for myself. In the poem which is found at the beginning of the book of Genesis, the author wrote, In God's image, God created them. We all share this indelible mark. And if the other is created in God's image, then we must, we must always act with compassion. Don't let this moment pass. Why don't we take a breath to think and reflect on what Rebecca has shared with us. Think about some of the questions she's posed and consider what opportunities we have before us to practice being compassionate people. God, God of the other, help us to act with compassion. Help us to recognise and draw out the sacred best in the other. 
and in doing so, recognize and draw out the sacred best in us. This is our prayer of revolution. Amen. Before we close by singing, there is just one piece of news to share with you, and that is that uh, Media City UK Church in Salford are looking for a part-time youth worker. So if you're interested in that, click on the link which will appear somewhere around me, possibly below me. If not, um, check this thread, or you can go to oasisuk.org um, and then click on Work With Us. Thank you for being with us this morning. Um, we're going to close by singing No Outsiders. We look forward to seeing you next week. You are a refuge, you have no borders. When I was a stranger knocking at your door, you took me in. With no questions and no conditions When I was a sinner running from your grace You called me friend You called me friend And there are no outsiders to Gathered in your arms, sings with one voice.